Hello viewers, this is my Linhive 400 ATV 2014 four-wheel drive, uh, also known as uh, the Bighorn 400, I believe, in North America. Uh, in Europe, this is registered as a tractor with uh, working headlights, signal lights, and whatnot, as it has certain farm attachment in implement attachments and uh, winch. Um, Anyway, this uh, I bought this about six months ago. It was in pretty bad shape because it was uh, a rollover and it was ridden quite hard in the forest. The frame seemed to be in quite good shape, but pretty much every piece of plastic on here was cracked or broken off and needed to be replaced. There was a lot of electrical issues. The frame seemed to be quite good, didn't seem to have any twist or bend in it. So far I haven't found anything there, but... Uh, couple bearings on the right hand side both bearings on the right hand side are shot and needing replacement that's why it's up on the that's why it's up off the ground at the moment and I have had to actually order one front wheel because I found it to be to be bent have a nice hitch on this one too uh, independent suspension all the way around trailer lights attachment here as well that's the hook it's really handy if you want to put a small car trailer behind there and tow things around. Uh, it's also <clears throat> it also came with a uh, snow plow attachment. So um, the reason I'm making this video is because uh, when I, after I bought this, I found there's very few fix-up videos or videos on on troubleshooting these particular quads and their own little quirks. So I thought I would maybe give some of my findings to others to learn from or maybe to work from and maybe help somebody out out there who's who's maybe stuck with a similar similar quad and looking for specific information on this type or this name brand. Like I said, uh, there were a lot of electrical issues with this and I think it's because it was driven a lot in the forest and left wet out in the cold winter rain and snow to sit and not was never put under a roof there was a lot of of course uv damage and whatnot as well first thing i found that was a problem if i just lift up the seat here now electrically was the fuse box now when i got this thing it would run it would start up nicely it would run for a few minutes and then it would start to it would start to overheat and it would shut down and it wouldn't want to start up again. So I started checking this, that and everything else I could think of and looking up instructional videos on YouTube of course. Like most people do when they're trying to troubleshoot something. One of the issues I found was there was loose wires attaching here into the fuse box on the left side and the fuses were in the wrong order. So I fixed those up still had the same problem so next I checked out <clears throat> of course the switches on this side and I found that the brake switch which is underneath the handlebar there brake switch uh, wasn't working so I replaced that and the problem didn't resolve yet it continued to start and stall after running for a few minutes and overheating so next thing I did, of course, was I took out the ignition and I found it was full of gunk and rusted up and the contacts were really poor. So I cleaned it all up, put it all back together and then it started working better. Also, I created this flap to go on top there in case it rains and the water doesn't go inside to the inside and start causing the same issues again. Still, I had problems. It would run for a few minutes and it would heat up and then it would shut down and wouldn't start. So, um... Pull the carburetor off, rebuilt that. When I did that, I found with the carburetor, um, it, it wasn't actually the original carburetor. It was off of a off of an Arctic Cat snowmobile, apparently. But anyway, I found the rebuild kit for that and rebuilt that. Then I found that the intake manifold had a leak in it, so we ended up replacing that. The gunk stuff didn't work. Uh, of course, I did a few. I did some electrical testing, and I found that the coil was also bad. 
spark plug coil. Replace that and it and the spark plug. So the spark plug is down in there. You can see that. Where is it now? There we are, new plug and new coil, original parts, and that seemed to help quite a bit. But it didn't solve everything. So eventually I came down to the more expensive parts. And I thought, well, I hope I don't have to replace this piece here. So I began to think about it a little bit more. I thought there's there's many components there underneath this side. Of course, I eventually began to be a bit suspicious of the, the alternator as being the issue because quite often in a lot of YouTube videos I've been reading, it was that people were indicating that it's either starving starving for air and shutting off because there's a blockage in the fuel line or the fuel tank or it's electrical component that's getting heated up and expanding and then not making making generating or conducting electricity correctly so i was afraid that it would be an expensive alternator generator issue and and i pulled this off cover off on this side to find out that it was the induction coil or the pulse generator part of the of the system this thing here that actually wasn't working correctly this is the piece itself fairly inexpensive to replace uh, and fortunately quite easy to test and this itself is it's interesting because if you take a heat gun to this particular model this particular piece here and you do a test on it with your with your electrical equipment you can see that it's not conducting once it's heated up it starts to go wonky it just does crazy things so i replaced that little piece put it in there hooked everything back up and boom she ran great so if you're having trouble with yours after considering of course air leaks and uh, blockage uh, or fuel issues take a look at your electrical components of course i had a, a, a spark plug coil that was bad had to be replaced but i also had a pickup coil and this was the this was the culprit here the main culprit besides of course ignition issues and things other electrical issues that had to be sorted um once this piece was replaced it ran like a top after that um a couple other electrical issues um this machine had that might other viewers might also have is the fact that you can't get it to show neutral or reverse on the on the dashboard which is up here when you turn it on you have a uh, you have a reverse light there and of course you have your neutral light there and there's these two little switches down here on the transmission which are governed by two little shafts as they move in and out down here this one here and this one here now both of these are just regular electrical switches uh, in which which sit on top of sit basically in a well and in the well there's a there's an electric there's a rod that comes in with different notches grooves in it in them actually and uh, they either move these tangs that are part of these electrical switches up or down to make contact or to to <clears throat> of course remove contact and electrical flow and that's what turns on the or of course lights up your neutral and your reverse lights and allows you to start your engine if you can't have if you don't have these working you don't have your neutral switch light on or it doesn't indicate that because of these you're gonna have to take these off like I did and bend the tangs until you get it so that it actually works correctly and it'll allow you to start your engine uh, those are just a couple of things issues that I thought had with mine and <clears throat> because nobody else had I hadn't, didn't find any other videos on it on this particular model this Lin High model I thought maybe I could help out some other viewers who may have a similar similar machine with similar issues all right I hope that helps somebody out